Welcome back to Fantasy Hockey Picks and Bets on the Mayo Media Network for Wednesday, March 30th. My name is Cecil Peters and I am here to go through today's six game slate from a betting perspective. Before we get started, as usual, if you could hit the like button wherever you are watching and or listening. And if you are on YouTube, please be sure to leave a comment. Let's make it just a comment about your favorite bet of the night really helps the show out, helps bump it up on YouTube. So if you guys could do that, that would be extremely beneficial. And let's get on to the games. We got Winnipeg in Buffalo to start off the night. The Buffalo Sabres are plus 140, hosting the Jets, who are minus 160. As usual, these are the opening lines on DraftKings Sportsbook posted the day before when I record this. And finally, we just get a reasonable number on the Winnipeg Jets here. I'm not sure if I'm happy that they're finally getting recognized for what they are, which just isn't a great hockey team. They're not horrible, but they're not great. They're outside of the playoff picture right now, and it's going to take a really good run for them to get back into it. So I don't know if I'm happy that the books are kind of recognizing that, or if I'm disappointed that the value in betting against the Jets seems to be gone, at least for this game. Usually I would be obviously disappointed that the value is gone, but a couple of the last times I bet against the Jets, it has not gone our way in overtime. Bet on Columbus against them as a big dog a bit ago. They ended up losing in overtime. Same thing with the Arizona Coyotes. Bet on them to beat the Jets as well. They lost that game in overtime as well, so betting against the Jets hasn't been that great. Buffalo would be an interesting option to beat them here at home. But at plus 140, I just don't think I can get there. If this game was played two weeks ago, the Buffalo Sabres would probably be plus 180 against the Jets. But with Winnipeg's recent struggles, they've lost. Basically, their last three games haven't been great. They did win those two games in overtime, both against bad teams, though. And then their game before that, also against another non-playoff team in the Ottawa Senators. Another loss for the Winnipeg Jets. That was 5-2. So Winnipeg has been not great against some not great opponents. Buffalo's actually played pretty well lately. They won their last game against Chicago 6-5. Dominated the whole game. Probably should have won big, but they were actually down 4-0 at one point. Came back for a big comeback win. Scored a kind of a fluky goal, 10 seconds left. But when you dominate the whole entire game, eventually some of the breaks have to go your way. So Buffalo got a win in the game. They absolutely deserve to win. So with their recent hot streak, the Jets' recent May kind of average streak, The number just seems pretty reasonable in this game, so I can't quite justify a bet on the Buffalo Sabres. Looking at shot props, Tage Thompson's been the guy for a while now for the Buffalo Sabres, but he's missed his 3.5 shot prop in the past couple games. Rasmus Dahlin is playing phenomenal on the back end. If you can find a a 2.5 shot prop on him, that is probably where I would go. Or Victor Olofsson, he's been big plus money to go over 2.5 shots for the past few games. He's been hit or miss, but at plus 130 odds, doesn't need to hit every single time for him to return value. So Olofsson or Rasmus Dahlin would be where I would go to on the Sabres end, just kind of getting away from Tate Thompson, who just hasn't really been getting it done lately, although I'm sure it'll come back. Next game on the night is in Detroit. We got the New York Rangers minus 205. Detroit is plus 165. Detroit's first game since an 11-2 drubbing from the Pittsburgh Penguins. They get the Rangers on the back-to-back here as they play in Pittsburgh the night before. I am recording this before that game, so I'm not sure how it went. But Igor Shesterkin got the start against the Penguins, which means Alexander Georgiev is going to get the start against Detroit. This is obviously good news for the Detroit Red Wings. Georgiev's been fine, but he's definitely not on Shesterkin's level. Plus 165. I would hope that maybe this number moves to plus 180 or more, but with the back-to-back for the Rangers, the home ice for the Detroit Red Wings, this is probably as good as we're going to get. And I think I'm going to go for it. It's the season of the underdog. I mentioned yesterday a lot of these young teams that are out of playoff, out of the playoff picture are still going to be competitive. They're playing for jobs next year. They're just playing fast and loose hockey. So these young teams like the Detroit Red Wings, lots of times great chance for them to upset these playoff teams like the New York Rangers. Goaltending has been brutal for Detroit, but they have shown some promise. Nedeljkovic has had some really, really good games mixed in with some brutal games. If we get good Alex Nedeljkovic against average Alexander Georgiev with the offense that the Wings can produce, I like the Detroit Red Wings to win this game at decent plus money odds. Next game of the night is in Edmonton. Edmonton Rollers minus 215, Los Angeles Kings plus 175. Edmonton is two points behind Los Angeles in the standings. Both teams are their second and third in the Pacific Division. LA slightly ahead of them. But like I said, Edmonton with the one game in hand. And this is the proverbial four-point game. If Edmonton wins, 
Obviously, it keeps those points away from Los Angeles. Same thing if Los Angeles wins. It allows them to jump four points ahead of the Edmonton Oilers and taking away two points that they could have got with a win. Edmonton won 6-1 to in their last game, and L.A. lost 6-1. to L.A.'s loss was particularly bad because it was to the lowly Seattle Kraken. So you'd think after those games it would be an easy call on the Edmonton Oilers. But I really felt that L.A. outplayed Seattle for the first two periods of their last game, and the wheels just kind of fell off. They gave up a goal after dominating possession to go down 3-1 late in the second period. And then early in the third, they were playing well, had possession in the offensive zone, and then Jordan Eberle of the Kraken blocked a shot, went the other way and scored. Made it 4-1. Wheels kind of fell off for the LA Kings after that, and they ended up losing 6-1. But they're just a really tough team to play against. They generally outshoot their opponents. They're really aggressive on the forecheck. All four lines look the exact same. We've got the top line and the second line with a bit more scoring punch than the depth lines, but they all play the same way. They're extremely aggressive on the forecheck. It's really hard to get out of the zone against the Los Angeles Kings. They're all over you. It would be exhausting to play. So this is a different type of game for the Edmonton Oilers. It's not going to be the 6-1 drubbing of the Phoenix or of the Arizona Coyotes that they had the other night. Much better team as evidenced by the standings. They're basically in the same spot in the standings in the Pacific Division Yet the Edmonton Oilers are minus 215, just two games removed from giving up nine goals to the Calgary Flames. I had no choice but to take plus 175 on the Los Angeles Kings, two pretty even teams. They're going to play each other a ton probably down the stretch here. They played this game, and then the, right now at the playoffs started, these two teams would end up playing each other. So they're going to have to get used to playing against each other. Los Angeles has shown all year long they will happily go in to opposing buildings and come out with a big win. They've actually done it in Edmonton already once this year. There's no guarantees, but at plus 175, I absolutely feel like the Los Angeles Kings are the correct side in this hockey game, so that is where my money will go. Next game is in Arizona. Arizona slight home dogs, plus 120 to the San Jose Sharks. Pretty brutal game here. Both teams done for the year for the most part. Playoff hopes have been long gone. I have to give the edge, as do the books, at minus 140 to the San Jose Sharks as their top players continue to play decent. The return of Eric Carlson on the back end has been huge if he was healthy all season long. Who knows, maybe the San Jose Sharks are still in contention for a playoff spot. And then their top line right now of Timo Meyer, Thomas Sertel, and Alex Barabanov has been really well. They've just been playing great. Meyer coming off of a hat trick in his last game. The top players on the Coyotes don't seem to be doing enough lately to compete with them. Clayton Keller and Nick Schmaltz did have a nice run a few games ago. They were both on really hot streaks, but that seems to be over. The Coyotes' decent winning streak of a couple weeks ago seems to be a decent memory as well. I don't think it's going to get my money at the odds, minus 140. I think that's fair, but the San Jose Sharks should definitely win this hockey game. we got two games to go. One of them is in Vancouver, and it is a rematch of a couple nights ago. The St. Louis Blues slight road favorites, minus 115 at the Vancouver Canucks. Vancouver is minus 105 at DK Sportsbook as of right now. Rematch, St. Louis won their last game rather easily. There was a stretch at the start of the second period of that game where Vancouver outshot the Blues 10 to nothing. And it was actually, I think it was even worse than that, but it was 10 to nothing at one point. I think they even got a few more shots. So Vancouver had one really dominant stretch. Other than that, the St. Louis Blues seemed to be the better team for most of the game. Pavel Buchnevich, Robert Thomas, Vladimir Tarasenko was the go-to line. Scoring a couple goals for Tarasenko, or Rob Thomas with a couple assists, Buchanovich with some shots as well. That line's been really hot lately, and that's been important for the St. Louis Blues because the last few weeks, the only player that's seeming to score goals for them has been David Perron. Perron scored as well last night, so he kept his shot streak going. But now, the Blues have two lines that are both going really well. Buchanovich scored two a couple nights ago, and then Tarasenko, of course, the two last games. So that line's buzzing. Perron, Ryan O'Reilly, and Brandon Saad on the other top line is buzzing right now as well. Coming out of a pretty weak stretch for the St. Louis Blues, they slumped for a couple weeks before finally beating the Canucks in that game. Really didn't have a lot of confidence in them, but we did end up betting on St. Louis to beat Vancouver that game, and we're going to do the same here as well. Vancouver had a pretty decent road trip, but they really struggled at home before that, so I don't trust the Vancouver Canucks at home. I don't think it's a huge, huge advantage for them. They clearly struggled last time that they were here. So at minus 115, I am taking the far superior hockey team in the St. Louis Blues to win this game. Last game of the night is in Seattle. Seattle, of course, coming off that 6-1 to win over the Los Angeles Kings. But their home underdogs, plus 155, Vegas minus 180 on the money line. And that's where my money's going to go. Vegas technically still does hold a playoff spot, 
but they've played more games than any other team in the league and have Dallas and Winnipeg right on their heels. Winnipeg with a couple games in hand on them, Dallas with four games in hand. So while they technically are in a playoff spot, if you go by points percentage, they would fall outside of a playoff spot at the moment. Their desperation finally started to show last game. They went down 3-0 to the Chicago Blackhawks. Third period, they finally turned it on, tying the game, going down 4-3, tying the game again, and eventually winning it in overtime. So Vegas has finally got a little bit of positive momentum on their side. They've actually been really good at home lately, winning all their home games, losing all their road games. So that gives me a little bit of a pause, but I do think that with the momentum that they gained from that game, leadership of Alec Martinez back in the lineup, they have the possibility of Robin Lehner, who seems to be close to returning. He's not going to be back for this game, but they do have the knowledge that he's going to be back soon. So they're going to want to be in position for getting themselves into the playoffs because if they get there, they're likely going to have a bunch of players returning from injury. This team's going to be a force at the playoffs start, and they're in it. But they need to get there first, and they can't afford to give up any points to the lowly teams like the Seattle Kraken. And honestly, right now, they're only three points behind the Oilers, five points behind the LA Kings in the Pacific Division. So there's a chance they could sneak into the second or third spot there as well. Vegas has to be motivated. You're really going to see what this team is about. If they lose this game to the Seattle Kraken, I think you could probably write them off for the year. These are points that they have to get, and a minus 180. I say they get them, and my money is going to say that the Vegas Golden Knights get the win in this game. So that's it for the night. We got the six games. We're going to bet on the Vegas Golden Knights minus 180, St. Louis minus 115, LA plus 175, Detroit plus 165, Thought about betting on the Sabres, but at plus 140, it's just not enough for me. If you're looking for some overs, Winnipeg Buffalo, I would have to say, will probably go over. Winnipeg's goaltending hasn't been great all year. Connor Hellbuck's been decent lately. And then Buffalo's been pretty bad in that the last little while. So I think that game probably goes over. Detroit and the Rangers, obviously with Detroit's goaltending, an over is always in play there. LA and Edmonton, I would actually stay away from or I would lean towards the under. LA is probably going to try to play a slow defensive game to shut down the Oilers' big stars. San Jose, Arizona, goaltending-wise, defense-wise, I would lean towards the over. But with two teams that don't have a ton of offense, it's hard to say so. So that's a game that I'm staying away from basically in every way imaginable. St. Louis and Vancouver, they just went under two nights ago. I can't see them all of a sudden exploding for, exploding for a ton of goals. And then Vegas and Seattle... If any other game is to go over, this would probably be the one. Seattle hasn't been great in that all year, and Vegas is on their third string goalie. Those are the bets for the night here. Thank you, as always. We're going to have Jake and DJ take you through the Thursday and Friday slates, and we will see you guys next week.